Oh, what's up? Oh my gosh, brother from another mother. Oh, look at this. Look at that. If I didn't have a big head by now, then I got one now. How y'all doing? This is ATL. EXP agents make some noise. Okay, okay, okay. Now watch this. You can cut it. If you. Non EXP agents. Not with EXP, make some noise. Oh! Who's it? See, she's hiding. She's like, ah. See, the thing is, are you with EXP? No? Yes? Yeah? Okay. All right. See, here's the thing. If you're at an EXP rally, you're not an EXP agent, you are not trying to draw attention to yourself at all. I know the feeling. I'm going to make it easy for you, though, all right? Non-EXP agents, all right? If you're open-minded to a really incredible opportunity, all right, just meet me afterwards. I got something really, really incredible I want to show you. I'm just kidding. Maybe. All right, I'm here today to talk about your business, all right? Making more money, making more sales, doing, doing more business, right? So I built my business up to where I was making a million dollars a year, single agent in Alabama. All right, so who, who wants to build their business up to a million dollars a year? Make some noise. Okay. Do you feel like maybe a good path to that is, I don't know, getting more listings? Getting more listings. So what I'm hearing is, is that you guys are looking for a breakthrough. That's what you're here for, a breakthrough. Say yes. yes. Looking for a breakthrough. Yes. So a breakthrough is that moment where you realize something, right? And really most people feel like a breakthrough is learning the scripts, what to do, what to say, how to do it. And that's what all of you, I believe you think you're here, or come to these kind of events, or you're searching for whatever it is you're searching for, that's what you're really searching for. But I submit to you that that's not really what you're looking for. Do you want to know what you're really looking for? You're actually looking for a transformation. A transformation. You, you, everybody knows what to do. You can just Google how to get listings. <laughs> There's plenty of YouTube videos on how to get listings. You know how to do it. That's the easy part. But have you have you transformed into the person who can do it? See, that's, that's the part right there. It's the transformation. Transformation is extremely painful. That's why not a lot of people do it. Why? Because you have to realize that the things that you're doing right now are actually bad habits. But you can't let go of them. Because they're working to a certain level. But they're only going to get you to that certain level. You gotta let go of these habits that you think are good, but they're really bad. So the first part is realizing that what you're doing is actually bad habits. So that you can start the transformation process. Now, a lot of you, the reason why you're, you're not, can I say this? The reason why you're not good at sales, can I say that? Okay. The reason why you're not good at sales is because you haven't transformed into the person who accepts sales. You want your client to transform into someone who says yes to you, but you, you're not willing to transform yourself. See, we attract who we are, right? Everything in this world reproduces after its own kind. If you're not the kind of, you, you need to be the type of client that you want. A lot of you, how many of you, and, and be honest, how many of you would list your house with you? Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. Let me ask you a different way. How many of you, as long as we're being honest, since everybody said they were being honest and they said, woohoo, how many of you would not list a ha your house with you? 
Ha ha. <laughs> We're just not being honest today at all. Either way it goes. But do you guys understand what I'm saying? The reason why you're scared to ask for the business is you don't like when people ask you for business. You gotta be open if you want other people to be open. When you approach someone and you have sales resistance, every time somebody tries to sell something to you, you're, you are apprehensive when you try to ask for business and close someone, and they feel it. And they're like, this is a red flag. I'm gonna go pick one of the other 1,500, 2,000, how many agents are in Atlanta? Huh? 4,000? 4,000? 4,000, I was like, 4,000? 4,000 agents in my little town. They, they'll go pick, there's 40,000 options. If you, if, if the, the same energy that you said, oh, I'll list my house with myself. That's the same energy you need to have when you go talk to your prospects at the listing appointments. That you believe in it so much that you're the best option. Or let me think about this. Don't answer it because y'all ain't going to tell the truth. <laughs> Out of all 40,000 agents in Atlanta, out of all those, would you pick yourself, out of all the rest of them, to list your house? Your house that you own. Would you list your own house with you out of all 40,000? Are you the best option in your mind out of all the 40,000 agents? You didn't have to answer because I know you're all lying. <laughs> I want you to just think about it. See, this is the mindset you got to get in because it all comes down to communication and how we're articulating our value. That's what it all comes down to. Now, speaking of transformation, can I tell, can I, I know you, a lot of, how many of you guys follow me already? Yeah. Is it okay if I tell you guys a piece of my story? Because this is one of the best transformation stories I've experienced. <laughs> <laughs> Since yesterday. In 2002, I got in the business. I was the worst salesperson on the planet. It took me eight months, long, grueling months, to get to my first deal. I was roofing houses and trying to do real estate, and whew, And I was 20 years old. If you can imagine eight months, 20 year old, who doesn't want to be on the roof, in the hot sun, who badly wants to become a real estate mogul, and I'm on that roof every day. All right, this is how bad I was at sales. I hit my first deal. And I'm just gonna make this long story short because I don't have a lot of time and I got a lot of stuff I wanna talk about. I was 20, the market exploded. This is 2002, three, four, five, when the market exploded before the market crashed. I made a million dollars before I'm 23. I'm like, I got Hummers, Cadillacs. You guys know what I'm talking about in Atlanta, right? Hummers and Cadillacs. I had Hummers, Cadillacs, houses. I'm riding around dirty. <laughs> Real dirty. <laughs> I didn't care about nothing because guess what? I'm a real estate mogul. This is how real estate is done. And all I had to do was call 10 properties and say, hey, who wants to make 100,000, 200, 300,000 a day? And one of those 10 would say me, and I would sell that property List it, sell in a day, and never talk to them ever again. Why? Because they, they didn't want to talk to me. Were they going to buy, were they going to buy another property for, for 200000 more than what they bought that one for just a couple years ago? No. They were taking their money and running for the hills. I sell vacation properties, so it's not primary homes. They're not, they're not trying to buy the next home. They're buying properties they don't need, cashing out, and running for the hills. I didn't need them. I could just call 10 more people, make another 20, 30. Call 10 more people, make another 20, 30. It was easy until it wasn't. I started flipping properties, and then I lost everything I had when the market crashed. So now I'm bankrupt, sleeping on friends' couches, sleeping in my car that my friend gave me. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a skipping a lot because I ain't got a lot of time because I want to get to the point of the transformation. I got back in the business. I went back to roofing houses. I worked on the oil rig. I got back in the business in 2008 
which it was so easy to sell real estate in 2008, it's not even funny. Why? Serve some hard from hard from Huh? It was so cheap. And there was so much for sale. It was like a buyer's dream. You mean to tell me I get my pick out of 100 properties and they're all half off? That was 2008, the greatest time in the world for real estate agents. So I came back and I learned the principles of the business that never change. There are principles of this business that will never change. They've been that way from the beginning of time and they'll never change regardless of what happens. You shouldn't care what NAR does, lawsuits, plaintiffs, class actions, Zillow, brokerages, uh, anybody, other agents. If AI came out and said, we're gonna take all y'all's jobs, sorry, and there's two agents left in the world, guess what? I'm gonna be one of them, and I'm gonna outsell the other agent. That's the attitude you need to have. Who can, I saw that real, yeah, any real fans? Real brokerage? Come on, guys. Y'all gonna be quiet now? Y'all been loud every time. They paid 9.5 million for the settlement. Y'all see that? Y'all see that? Yeah, I know, who? Real, real brokerage. I know, who? My point, my point is saying that is, is that it's on headlines and it's everywhere, right? And we see the NAR settlement thing everywhere, right? That, that should be private information that we don't even get to see, in my opinion. We, it doesn't matter to real estate agents at all. The principles never change. We're going to have a year in the next decade where we hit 7 million existing home sales. Mm, why do I believe that? That's an audacious prediction, Ricky. Why do you say that? We had six million in 2021. Wasn't that the year of the boom? That's the record. No. 2005, we had seven million transactions, existing home sales. Did y'all know that? And if you didn't know, now you know. And if you know that, and you realize what the demographic is for the next decade of people that want to buy homes, trade up sellers are ridiculous. How many people you know that hate their home that they're in? that want to move more than anything in the world. Y'all lying again. <laughs> Everybody does. The first time home buyers, ridiculous. We hit seven million before, we're gonna hit it again. And it's gonna be a glorious, you're gonna to wish to God you were in real estate when this happens. You don't care if you're getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten percent Who cares? You're gonna, you know what you're gonna get? You're gonna get not the value that you, that you provide. Nobody's gonna trade you $10 bill for a $10 bill, right? They still got a $10 bill. People don't pay for the exact value. You know what they pay for? You may tell you? They pay for more value than they're paying for. If you can't articulate that, you, that you're worth more than you charge, Whose fault is that? We're moving into a world where, well, I, I believe we are. I don't, I don't know where we're going. I don't care. Because closing is going to happen every single day regardless. And we'll hit 7 million transactions, and I'm going to be right here. I'm right here closing these deals every day while people are worried about stuff that doesn't even matter. There should be private information behind closed doors, but yet it's on, it's on front street. I got off track. I told you, I get carried away. Where I was going with this is that I got back in in 2008. We had the oil spill in the Gulf in 2010. I sell Gulf front condos. It was a mini recession. Agents were leaving the area. Sellers were dumping their properties. And I was like, okay, here we go. I can test out my new theories of, of how to survive any market crash. Because when the market took me out once, I was like, you ain't gonna do it again. I only, you only gotta teach me something one time. When my dad taught me how to lay shingles on a roof, he taught me one time. When my football coach taught me how to tackle, one time. You know, if you teach me twice, I, I ain't gonna learn it. The market took me out once, it ain't gonna take me out again. 
So when we had the oil spill, I said, here's my chance to see if what I believe I learned through the crash will work through anything. And I sold more property. I sold, I made 100, I made, I made, I made 50% more that year than I made the year before. And I said, great. And I went to the second best company in the world, Remax. The second, the second. <laughs> oh man. So I went there in 2010 and funny story. This is where I met my wife. And so I, I, I begin there in September of 2010. I show up, I see her there down the hallway. I'm like, woo! I was thinking, I wonder how long she's been working here. And then little did I know, she was looking down the hallway thinking, woo! And she was thinking, I wonder how long he's been working here. And when we finally started talking, we realized we both started in the same month. So we started talking and all this stuff, and we were best friends, because you can't date people in the same office. That's against the rule. That's against the law. So we were friends for a long time, and we were having so much fun because we went out, and what would we do when we go out? Drank. And it was so fun, laughing, dancing. I mean, y'all, y'all don't even want to see that. I wish we had videos. <laughs> and it was so much fun for so many years until it wasn't. And then we go out, we're drinking, we're drinking, and we fight. And now we're fighting every night. We're fighting, 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 and it wasn't fun anymore. And eventually it got to the breaking point where we decided to break up. So we broke up, and guess what I did? Hey, I'm going out to the club. So I went out and went crazy, crazy, for about a week. <laughs> Actually, exactly a week. It was, it was Saturday to Saturday. I remember specifically. And that last night, I was laying in my bed, and I was about to die. I was about to OD, and I was laying up, and I was looking in my, in my ceiling, and I swear on everything, I'm seeing Jesus. And I said, Lord, if I wake up tomorrow, if I wake up tomorrow, I'll never touch another drop, another sip, another puff, another nothing, ever, again for, I ain't even get there yet. I ain't even get there yet. You don't even know for, you, you. you don't even know if I woke up. <laughs> oh my God. So that next morning, I woke up. Y'all's hands are getting good. I'm not even through the story. So I wake up, I throw everything away. All right, I throw everything away. And I called her and I said, hey. I said, I know we've been fighting and all that stuff, but I almost died last night. And I woke up and I threw everything away. I'm never gonna touch anything ever again. I was like, let's, let's meet up, let's talk, let's get back together. If not, I understand. We meet, we talk, we get back together. And since then, we got married. We've got a four-year-old daughter. We travel, we speak, they're here, they're, they're in the hotel. They travel everywhere I go with me, et cetera, okay? That night, March 30th, this year, a couple of weeks ago, marked 10 years from that night, and I haven't touched a single drop, a single <laughs> sip. Now, where I'm going with the story for you is 
for years and years and years and years and years, I promise you, years, I tried to quit. Drinking wasn't really the biggest problem, by the way. And I tried to quit for years, never could. But then there was that one night, that one instant that created immediate transformation. See, the transformation itself was instant. It was immediate. It didn't take any time. When you, when you have a transformation, it's an immediate decision to transform and execute on that thing that you're transforming into and to become that next best version of yourself. That moment happens instantaneously. What takes so long is, is, is making the decision to transform. For years and years and years and years, I tried to change my bad habits. But until I got to the point where I was sick and tired of the way I was living, then I wasn't going to make the transformation, which happened instantly. Same thing's going on in your businesses. There's all these bad habits that you're doing that are kind of working but not going to get you where you want to go. And you want, it, you want to change. You want to change, but you're not tired of your situation enough to make the decision to transform immediately and to execute on your next chapter and only your next chapter, never going back to the old chapter. Can I get a way to go? All right. All right, hold on. Let me get a time check here. Five minutes? All right, I got, I got about 20, 30 more. All right, do we realize that we need to make a transformation if we want to get to the next level? Do we realize that if we want herds of people lined up around the corner that are saying yes to us, yes, we want to list our property with you, then we have to be that person that we want. Problem is, we're not. You'll send letters out for a buyer that you have to property owners that own the property that your buyer wants, and you're worried that the seller is going to think you're lying about it. Why? You have the buyer. Why, 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 are, you, why are you walking into this with this tone, giving them all kinds of red flags that you are lying even though you're not? It's because when people try to sell you, you think they're lying. Stop assuming people are lying. Be open-minded to the value that other people can actually provide you. If you close off to 100% of stuff when 60% of it was legit, you lost. Yeah, there's scams out there. Absolutely. But guess what? You're not one of them. Quit thinking they're going to think you're a scam when you're not. An agent texted me, Last week, last week, he texted me. He said, Ricky, I just lost a $4 million listing. I'm devastated. It was a lot longer text than that. <laughs> I, I called him and I said, I said, do what? I've been working this neighborhood. I was actually talking to this property owner. I've sold so many homes in this neighborhood, and I'm just devastated. My wife even nicknamed me the name of the subdivision. I said, okay. I said, bro, don't you realize that you can take that listing and call the other property owners in the, in, the, in the subdivision and tell them about the listing, plus it gives you an opportunity to find a buyer, okay? Everybody knows, everybody knows this already, right? He's like, I hear you. He sounded like Eeyore. <laughs> I said, okay, bro. I said, but, but listen to what I'm saying. I said, right now, that property's on MLS or not? Nope. I said, well, listen to what you could do. You could, take that you could take that list and you could call the owners and say, hey, I know of a property coming on the market soon. I can't tell which one it is, but if you or anybody you know is interested, I, we can get in position to get a head start on this thing. I can even call the agent that I know and actually get, get in there first if we want it. But that's a small window 
between the time that it's listed and the time it hits the market. And you're wasting that opportunity to bring so much value to the property owners in that subdivision by weeping that you didn't get the deal, when in reality the deal is more opportunity. You see, we think we live in this world where there's only so much to go around. All right, you got an apple tree. You take an apple off the tree. You got less apples or more apples? You eat the apple, you got less or more? How? The seeds grow apple trees that produce apples, that produce apple trees, that produce apples, that produce apple trees. When you take something out, it creates more of. When you, when some, when you lose a listing to another agent, number one, I'm going to go through this. Number one, you get future time back. You don't have to spend on that deal anymore. You can use that time to sulk about it or go produce five more deals in the same amount of time it would have taken you to do all the stuff it takes to list the property. Think about how many hours it takes to, 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 to handle the listing from start to finish. You just got all that time back. God just said, here. And you're like, oh, thank you for that time. I'm going to go over here and cry about it. <laughs> That's what agents do. Because they don't realize that, that there's opportunities within. So when you do this listing, number one, you get future time back. Number two, you learn, here's the difference in me and most people when they go to listing appointments. I'm not going to get the listing. I'm going for two reasons, to see what their pain point, what their problem is so that I can figure out how to solve it, and the two, to get better at listing appointments. That's it. If I get the listing, girl, right, because if I don't get the listing, I got future time back, I learned how to do a listing appointment better, and now I'm going to take the opportunity that that listing provides me, and I'm going to go find a buyer. I can call the people that have smaller houses around and say, hey, you need a bigger house? I got one I'd love to show you. You know how many relationships that I can create out of a listing that's not even mine with property owners in, in, around it? Oh my God, you know how much future business that is for me over the life of my career? Because I'm building a career. I don't care about 2024. I'm going to crush 2024. How many deals can I, can I squeeze into my 10, 20, 30 year career that I've committed to? You guys get what I'm saying? Yes. Every lost opportunity is not... I posted this on Instagram and an agent said, temporary defeat is really another opportunity in disguise. I said, the problem is, is you think it's temporary defeat. And I'm telling you, it's an opportunity now. Thanks, mom. <laughs> yeah. Do you guys feel the energy here? Do you guys feel the love that I have for you? and how badly I want you to succeed. Now, when you think about going to list appointments and losing listings, that needs to be your MO. That needs to be your, uh, your entire objective. Let me get out here and lose a bunch of listings because it just spawns more activity for you. And it teaches you so much. And guess what? You get listings. How many of you think setting more listing appointments, going to more listing appointments could be the key to you going to the next level in your business? Yes. I feel like I'm starting to feel like a politician or something up here. Like <laughs> everything I say, woo! <laughs> How many of you guys feel like I am the guy that can help you set limitless listing appointments? Yes. Yeah? Yeah? I'm doing a four-day challenge at the, in April. Four days. Set more listing appointments challenge at setmorelistingappointments.com. That's it. Setmorelistingappointments.com. Why? Because I feel like understanding how to communicate to your prospects, understanding the entire process, crushing the anxiety of the phone, I'm going to crush all that. I'm going to teach you more about getting listings in this four days than you've ever learned in your life. And you ever learn in your life. Because if I could do this in 25 minutes, think about what I could do in a four-day session. It's, it's only an hour or two a day, by the way. It's not 